Hello to all of you. We changed today, uh, actually this week of course, and we move on to a different book. It's uh, Kierkegaard's Fear and Trembling, actually I have it, I have a copy here, it's quite broken. So you can see how much I read it. This is the book. You may have different editions, which is fine, don't, no, don't worry about it. So uh, this whole book treats a problem that comes from the Bible. So we'll discuss a lot about God uh, the following two weeks. Um, again, as I mentioned before, it's not a discussion about God necessarily, but about certain problems that have to do with the philosophy of religion. It does not matter whether you believe or you do not believe in God. It matters for you. It does not matter for the purposes of this class. We do not, we do not try to figure out whether God exists or not. We do not try to figure out whether um, we should uh, believe in God or not. What we try to figure out, however, is how to understand the story within the framework of faith. Soren Kierkegaard is a Christian philosopher, Danish philosopher, so he's from Denmark, uh, but um, Christian at the same time, and he talks about the problem that appears in Genesis 22, when God comes to Abraham, the patriarch, and tells him, take your son, your only one, the one you love, Isaac, and offer him up as an offering up on the mountain, I will show you off. And I'm citing this from a translation, you may not have a, you may have a different translation in your Bibles, but this one is very literal from Hebrew. Um, and um, what does Abraham do? He, take, he wakes up in the morning, he takes his son, and he goes to the place of sacrifice for three days. Uh, for three days, that means that's how long the travel is to the place of sacrifice. And he's ready to sacrifice him. So the problem is, well, how can that be done? And in your, um, in your um, class note that I sent you already, you have this discussion about what to do in the case of Abraham's dilemma. And uh, one philosopher, Adams is his name, says that you can actually think about this as being a dilemma given by an argument. So, there are three beliefs. The first one is, if God tells me something, then it is morally right for me to do it. The second belief is, God tells me to murder my son or to sacrifice my son. And the third belief is, uh, it is immoral to sacrifice my son, to murder my son. Those three beliefs, which you see on the PowerPoint I sent you, are inconsistent. That is, two of them always reject the third because of the rules of logic, which means that Abraham cannot consistently hold within his mind these three beliefs. So he needs to reject something, Abra uh, Adam says, this philosopher. He, all, he may say, well, when God tells him, take, take your son, the only, the only one, the one you love, and sacrifice him, he may say, uh, well, uh, probably it's not God who's talking to me. Maybe I just hear voices. Uh, how do I know that the voice that tells me to take my son and to sacrifice him is truly the voice of God? That doing so, he'll reach your number two. He could say, for example, whatever God decides, uh, whatever God tells me is moral, so if uh, the number three statement, the one that claims that it's immoral to murder my son, is not true, it's false, so I have to reject that one. And so on. So all those are possible ways in which Abraham can look at the problem. Kierkegaard looks at this much more from a different perspective, and he considers all that, uh, the whole story actually, is a question of love. Especially because, um, you know, one may ask, what does faith mean? And if I am a faithful human being, how can, I, how can I approach this faith? If you look around in this world today, you can see that there are many people who consider themselves faithful, who do terrible things in the name of their faith. Let me just mention, you know, ISIS, you know, which is, you, you can see on TV all the time, right, uh, the terrorist. By, uh, who claim that they murder other people in the name of their faith. Well, how is that possible, you know? And uh, Kierkegaard says, perhaps, because it's a false understanding of what love means. So, um, the whole story for him, it is, in a way, a story of finding out what love for another human being means and what love for your... Um, your significant other, uh, forgive me, for your divinity, maybe. And I would say that Kierkegaard claims that love is always a gift. Love is always not deserved. 
And uh, I am emphasizing that love is not deserved, but love is offered freely as a gift. And let me give you one example, you know. I am sure you have heard this question, if not ask from your significant other, but at least in movies or in other situations. Why do you love me? You know? And often people give various reasons. Either because uh, of certain physical features of the other person, or maybe because um, uh, I, I often... Because, you know, sometimes when I teach this class face-to-face, -face, I, I ask this question, and sometimes people say, well, for the bank account or because the other one is the mother of my children, or because the way in which the other person makes me feel, or things like that, you know? But in any case, they, they, they can be included within uh, certain categories. I love somebody else for what he, she does to me, for what he, she, uh, for how he, she makes me feel, for whatever features that person may have that I love, but uh, I always give reasons. So why do I love God? You know, what, what would be the reason to love God? Especially when God is asking of me to sacrifice my son. What kind of reason can I still have to love a divinity which takes uh, my son away from me? And Kierkegaard discusses these various, um, these various problems and by the end of the book, I hope, we get a possible answer. I will not offer you now an answer. I'm just opening this question up to you. I will also um, I will also post under this video question a blog I, I once wrote, which has to do with Kierkegaard, but also with another author that you're not reading. But it's mainly about this, whether love is deserved or not. And it may make more sense in the context of our discussion. Um, I know this book is a little bit different than all the other books we've read so far. It's also a little bit strange in some sense. So do not hesitate to ask me questions by email or um, any other way, you know, you can uh, you can stop by my office. No, none of you actually, I think, only one, but perhaps stop by my office during this semester. So please do so, and um, I hope uh, I can hear from you soon. Take care.